Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. It's a beautiful morning here, uh, clear skies. The other day I was walking along Kalakawa yesterday and there was a young family there and the child was stopping and she was looking up and she was feeling a sprinkling of rain and she was like, there's no clouds. Where, 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 where's the water coming from? And the mom and dad looked up and so I paused and I pointed at the clouds, uh, what we call the... Uh, the uh, the um, lay area up here on the mountains of the on the Ko'olau range uh, we call it the flower uh, the flower line the rainbow area too so every morning we look up and there's rainbows up there the trade winds blow over the mountains and then they blow through that little that little rainfall and then by the time it gets into Waikiki it's a sunny day but you'll feel a little spritzing in Hawaii we call rain blessings and so uh and so that's what it is. That's, that's our nature with Jesus Christ. When we, when we spend time with the Lord, there's this, there's this spritzing of grace that follows us everywhere. And we may not even be aware of it. Sometimes it's so light. But the, the Holy Spirit wants to bless us and, uh, and give us the grace to live, a, live an abundant life. We'll be right back with our guest, Andy Sonier, and the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. The Lord, uh, the Lord uh, sends us his blessings like a shower. The Bible says that his mercies are, er are new every morning like the dew fall. And so no matter what, what mistake you just made, what the stupid thing you just did, or what you did yesterday, or what you did 10 years ago, uh, seek God, uh, seek his forgiveness. And even if it wasn't really a sin, but it was just like, you blew it. <laughs> Ask God to help you make it right, and uh, and to give you the grace to do it. Because we're not we're not intended to do this on our own. If that was the case, Jesus wouldn't have come. But God is the, the Catholic Church calls it doesn't call his his uh, his love for us grace. The Catholic Church calls it superabundant grace, so that we might have life and live it to the fullest. I have a friend, uh, actually Ra Aaron Rodgers' brother Luke, was in a reality TV show show with me called clean break and he has a tattoo along his ribs that says uh, i have come to give you life and give it more abundantly and that's a that's a painful place to have a tattoo but it's a constant reminder you know that that uh, that is the promise of jesus christ i have a friend with me uh here today uh not just a guest but a friend andy sonier from orange texas he's the leader of men and we're going to talk story about leading men and and and, and manly leadership andy welcome to the bear wasnick adventure Thanks, Bear. Thanks for having me back. Uh, it's always a pleasure to uh, be a guest on your show. Uh, you and I have a history, of, I guess, of about five or six years now, and uh, it's always good to good to be with you. Well, you know, we actually experienced a little bit of a, I, as far as I'm concerned, it was a miracle. Uh, when we met, uh, I was driving, uh, returning, I think, from filming Long Ride Home in the Midwest, and we were pulling my, my motorcycle, and Cindy was in the car, the SUV, and we pulled into a little town someplace, and it was a Whataburger. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm always jealous of you because you've got you can have a Whataburger whenever you want, can't you? Anytime. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's you know one time I was at I pulled into Baylor where I went to college, went to Baylor University, and I think I told you this, they had an In and Out Burger right next to a Whataburger, and so I had one of each, and my wife I wasn't sure if that was a a mortal sin or a miracle, you know? Don't know yeah, the glimpse of heaven is what it was. <laughs> but, you know, what, you, you're you very involved in men's leadership and men's ministry. I know you, uh, let's see, who did you bump into the other day that I know? Oh, you ran into Ron Gokenauer here from, yeah. from yeah. Hawaii. Were you at the CMLA event or what was that? That's correct. Yeah, we were at the uh, CMLA summit in, in Malvern, Pennsylvania, and I uh, ran into uh, your buddy Ron. And, uh, you know, we got to know know each other a little bit and uh you know of course you know we had this, a common friend in bear wozniak so we had something to talk about all good <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny because when i when i met ron i had not i think my first book had just come out uh i wasn't really on the scene within the cat you know it wasn't really uh didn't have a radio show on the catholic 
I didn't even think I had a radio show yet at all. I think I had a little podcast. It was a surfing podcast. And Ron and I brought That Man Is You to Hawaii. Oh, fantastic. And, and I just remember, the, the and then we had a, a little men's, a quarterly event, we called it, like a little men's event. And uh, we thought, well, you know, the Filipino men here, they're, a lot of, they're real Catholic, but they're macho. They're not going to want to come to this event. But when they came, I, I was an instructor in Eskrima, you know, the stick fighting, the martial art that killed yeah. Magellan. <laughs> Um, uh, and so, uh, and so we, we taught them how to beat each other up before, as soon as the event started, we got stick, we brought all these <laughs> a scream of sticks and I don't know. And then I was supposed to speak at the first men's, the big, big, big event. And I got a call to be in Hawaii five Oh, which was a major thing for me. So I, I, I couldn't be to the, at the men's event and on Hawaii five Oh at the same time. So, uh, finally they're going to invite me to come back, I think, and speak after 10 years or probably maybe they're going, oh, okay, we'll let you come and talk at the men's event. But yeah. yeah, a great guy and a leader of men like you. Yeah, and you and I actually met for the very first time at CMLA in Dallas. Yes. And uh, that's where our friendship began. What so. is CMLA? Let people know what CMLA is. Yes, it's the Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's headed up by a group of awesome men who are, who are leaders. And uh, it's, it's to develop ministry to men in all the dioceses in the country. So, and, and beyond, uh, into mm -hmm. Canada and, and other countries. But uh, men need uh, to have a, a role model or a, a guideline to, to kind of set up their ministry to men in, in their parishes. And uh, CMLA is a wonderful outreach, uh, a great resource to have. Uh, you know, they're, they're set up in regions. So uh, there's a region for everyone in the country and, and they're, uh, they're available. Uh, just have to look them up online. I think it's a uh, uh, catholicmenleaders.org i think is their is their web address it's 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 such a great organization i remember when i first kind of came on the scene i was talking with doug berry and i was saying we need to have someone that some something that organizes all these get not organizes necessarily but but infuses and works together and gets all the different men's ministries and conferences working together and then praise god for cmla what's the name of your event uh, we are the Christ in You Catholic Men's Conference. We're an annual event. Uh, we uh, we try to stick to the second or third, maybe even fourth week of August, uh, and we choose that date uh, because, basically, as you know, in Texas in August, it's it's really football. too hot to do anything. No, it's football. It's too hot to do anything. Yeah, but football hasn't quite started yeah, yet. Yeah, you get so you we, get it in before you you, you got to get it in before football starts. That's in right, Texas. Yeah. Football and hunting, you know, once September rolls around, you know, you can forget it. You're not going to, you're not going to get guys on a Saturday to commit to anything but those two. That's so, cool. uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we are, uh, we started out as, as a ministry in, in, in my parish in St. Francis in Orange. And we've moved, uh, we, we actually created our own, uh, self-standing 501c3, uh, so that we serve the diocese now, um, if so, if so someone we, if someone wanted to uh, start a men's ministry, and they needed how to they needed to start a five hundred one c three, I suppose you could send them a template of what you did. It would be pretty much a boilerplate. Yeah, it, it's not as hard as it think <laughs> as you think it would be. Actually, uh, we use LegalZoom as a uh, as as mm. a, a kickstart for us, and uh, it, it's really laid out pretty well. You know, you just uh, establish your business, and you know, you, you create a corporation, and uh, then you apply. To the uh, IRS for and your tax-exempt status, and that used to be a big process. Now, for a small organization like that, you can do it online with them, and it's approved almost yep. immediately. So, yeah. and it, it's not a big, it's not an onerous thing to do at all. Just, just checking boxes. But that is part of leading men: is taking care of yes. the administrative things and, and having the right bucket to, for funding to come into, and to, because right. it takes fuel to do all these things. When, when did very, you? Yeah, go ahead. Good. It's very time consuming also. I mean, all of us work full time jobs. So it, it's all, you know, a volunteer thing that we do. And, you know, we have families. So we have to juggle all those things into place, you know, to find the appropriate time to get it all in. So no, they, uh, they, they, they say, uh, they used to say that uh, back in the charismatic renewal days, Mary had a little lamb, it never became a sheep, it became a charismatic and died of lack of sleep. <laughs> you know, and so when, once you give your life to the Lord, um, you know, you got to keep your life in balance, but don't be afraid to let the Lord use you. You may, it, you, may right. you may get a little bit busier than you than you you want to be. But the greatest thing is, Andy, I, I I I I would imagine that there are people that you will see in heaven that will say, Andy, it was because I went to that event that you that you I certainly created. hope so. The, the, that, people everlasting fruit, 
man, people's yeah. lives change forever. Yeah, it, it, it's, you know, you, you try to set up as many situations as you can for other men to, to fall into those into those areas where they they grow closer to the Lord. You well, know? let's and talk about, yeah, go ahead. We got to take a break. But if you, when, when, you, when, you set, when you set up the environment, you know, God does the rest of the work, but it's, it's getting to that point to get the men there. It's like making it, it's like Peter May, you know, making a net. You know, the, the, the word weight, by the way, in, in the Greek means to mend a net. So you, you're, you're preparing a big net. You throw the net and the Lord says, and the Lord sends the fish like he did That's with right. Peter. This is the Bear Watson Convention. Adventure. We're talking to Andy Sonier. If people want your help and little guidance in terms of men's leadership, how can they find you? Uh, we have our website. It is christinu-cmc.com. Pretty and simple. that's where they can go to find. That's where they can go to find out about the, this this year's yeah. conference. You can contact us there. The, the home page of that website has all the information on how to get tickets for the uh, for the conference and uh, the history of our, our organization and, and contact points. Okay, we're talking with Andy Sonia. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue. Through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been? And how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to let everybody know my new book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, is, is, is ready to be ordered now. It's on Sophia. It'll be in Barnes & Noble stores and Christian bookstores and Catholic bookstores and Amazon. And we would really like it if you go to Amazon and, make, and, and, and order it because uh, when you get it, then you can do a review. And as soon as you do that, it elevates the promotional element of Amazon so that more people, we can get the word out to more people. But 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? It's based on our guest's life, Andy Sonier. Andy, a leader of men, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Great to be here. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a type of book that I think every Texan, you know, will, would identify with, right? Sure. Yeah, I mean, you, you throw the word cowboys in there. I mean, <laughs> where, where else you can, you, you might find cowboys in a few other states, Wyoming or Montana, but well, Texas is synonymous for cowboys. Yeah, well, I was, I was, uh, I'm going to Montana uh, in a couple, few months to see Father Joe, Joe uh, up there, Paddock up there, and speak, speak to some of the colleges and stuff. And then, of course, Father Bryce Lundgren is in Wyoming, and he and I hooked him up with Sophia. His book, The Catholic Cowboy Way, is out. So, but but there's nothing more 
cowboy than Texas. And I, I lived That's in right. Baylor, man. They were we used to call them goat ropers, the guys that walked around wearing boots but <laughs> weren't really cowboys. But uh, right. but no, there's a real Texas. Uh, there's a real real element of the cowboy that still. What do you think that that means? Uh, there's a song that my wife introduced me to. We were driving along Diamond Head over here in Waikiki, and the song came on the radio, and she tuned, turned it up. She said, you're going to love this song. And there's a woman singing, and the, and the chorus of the song is, where have all the cowboys gone? What do, what do you think that means? You know, it's, uh, it, I, would, I would think it would mean, you know, where are the old-fashioned guys at? The guys who were guys, you know, who, mm-hmm. who were men, who were gritty, who uh, weren't afraid to get dirty, uh, had, uh, had good manners, good morals, mm. uh, guys who, uh, who knew how to treat uh, women, with mm-hmm. respect, uh, you know, how to treat just others in general and mm-hmm. with respect. Uh, and, you know, then you had your bad cowboys, too, that, you know, but that, yeah, you have that. All but, they did, but they didn't live by the cowboy code. You know, That's they right. didn't live by that code of humility. And and uh, like you said, being t- riding for the brand, uh, you know, you know, getting the job done, come hell or high water. You know, I like what you mentioned about how they treat women. Mm-hmm. Like when I'm out on the golf course and, you know, you never know who's going to join, join you if they pair you up with other people. And w- when a man speaks disrespectfully of women on the golf course, you know, how the, that so-called guy talk, yeah. um, it's, 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 you automatically know who he is. You know right. exactly who he is. He looks at women as objects and not as subjects of, of love. And, uh, and how a man treats a woman is one of the chapters of my book, how, how a man treats a woman defines him. But we're talking about leadership and, 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 and the need for, for men to, um, to join together. You know, my, my deepadventure.com website, we have the Man Cave and the School of Manliness, non-Facebook community, and the three-year curriculum that we men go together, and then the men can lead their sons through, and it's audio and video and all of that. And it's, 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 it's men coming together. Men come. A friend of mine, Daniel Markham, who does our, is, is a, one of the voices on our radio show, sent me pictures last night of about... 20 guys that get together once a month and they have cigars and whiskey and they just talk story about the Lord, you know? And then there's your men's conferences. Do you guys also have small groups as part of your um, that's, outreach? That's the goal that we try to do. Uh, we, try, we try to reach uh, ministry to men in, our, in the parishes by means of this men's conference. Uh, we're having a, a actual men's leadership summit about a month after this year's uh, event, and it's about getting men... Uh, we're inviting three or four men from each parish to come together and learn how to lead uh, small ministry to men in their parish. And we're actually bringing in John Edwards to come in and give a one day summit. And uh, John is, uh, he's, he's got a heck of a deal going on with his ministry right now. And he's, he is one that's uh, building these, uh, these, these groups in the parishes and he's doing a fantastic job. You know, I'm sorry, the name rings a bell, but I don't remember the name of his ministry. What is it? Uh, just a guy in a pew, pew ministries. Oh yeah, pew Big, ministries. Tall guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't yeah. miss him. He's he's about he's about six nine. Uh, yeah. Big ball headed guy. Yeah, I think I've, I think I've been on his. He has. A, does he have a podcast? Right. Yeah, just a guy yeah. in a pew. Yeah, I think I I got. That's how I know him. I got to be on his podcast once. Didn't you have him on your show once? Before? I probably did too. Uh, yeah. I probably did too. He just doesn't stand out to me as much as uh, Andy Sonia does. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's it's great when you see men step and step up to the front lines, but they need to be equipped, and that's what you guys are doing. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's the that's the the end game is to get guys uh, having these these weekly meetings or these weekly gatherings. Because look, we if we do a men's conference once a year, the other you know fifty odd weeks of the year, there's nothing going on. It, the conference bears no fruit. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the fruit that we're looking to to or the seeds that we're looking to plant is something that lasts. Fruit that fruit that lasts. So each week these guys can come together and uh, and fellowship. Uh, you know, we all have issues. Guys have issues. We know this. Every one of us has some type of issue, some type of hang up, and other guys identify with those issues and. and you know, you want to bounce these things off of each other and, and share, you know, in, in private and um, and have the ability to feed off each other and, and grow spiritually. You know, and I think it's, it's a big thing. It's a big thing to have those groups because uh, you know, a lot of times our wives don't understand some of the issues that we deal with. 
uh, you know, our priests absolutely do, but they don't always have time to minister to us as, as we need it. So it's good to have these, these groups that we can, we can feed off each other. And as we say, you know, the iron sharpens iron. Mm-hmm. And when you, when you, when you come together as a group of men and you pray and you share, uh, you know, you know, f- real good fruit bears from such events. And you know, it doesn't have, what I like about CMLA is that it, it's organic, like whatever, whatever is happening, you know, that you don't, there's that man as you program, there's Exodus 90, there's um, Mark Hulk's group, the King's Men, there's great ministries like that, that you can say, I want to do this one, I want to do that one, I want to do that one, or you know what, I just want to get a bunch of guys together once a week and have coffee, and we'll go through the book of John or something, and, but we'll talk story, and we'll right. get to know each other. Um, so it's organic, but it's really critical that each man be part of, like even Jesus had his pack, you know, his 12 men that he that he was with. It's really important that men be, like I, I had a group of guys when I was, when we were filming out in Florida, some good friends of mine, once a week we would get together uh, for coffee or breakfast, but we had a group text. And through the day we would send stupid stuff to each other, but we would check in and go, I did my 60 push-ups, I did my 60 minutes of prayer, I did my 60 minutes of, of of cardio, whatever we would have, we would, we would, we were always in dialogue with each other, supporting each other, encouraging each other. So having three or four or five guys like that. And the question is this, if someone will say, well, I'd like to be part of a men's group, but my church doesn't have one. What do you say to them? Well, contact us. We'll help you get one started. It's, it's not as, it's not as hard as you, as you think. And the biggest hang up some guys have with, with not getting men's group started is, no one feels like, or a lot of guys don't feel like they're worthy mm. to lead. Okay, and and worthiness has absolutely nothing to do with it. We're all worthy to do this because when Jesus chose the first twelve, none of those guys were were very worthy. You know, they were they were from all walks of life. You know, uh, but he calls us. He doesn't. Jesus doesn't call the righteous. He calls the sinners. Mm. So it's uh, we're all worthy to step up to the plate and grow in our in our spiritual journey. So uh, don't ever feel like you're you're unworthy to lead. Uh, you know, leaders have an innate ability, uh, or, or just innately know that they're leaders. You know, they always have the uh, the urge to move to the front. Mm-hmm. They're, they're the guys that always want to be behind the steering wheel, uh, and you know that you're a leader. But a lot of guys are just too apprehensive to step forward because they don't feel worthy to do it. So don't ever feel yeah, like that's a lie. That's a lie. You're never going to be worthy. And by the way, God will. God is looking for the willing, not so much for the pure and holy. And uh, but but when you do step forward, the Lord will begin to work with you, and He'll that's develop right. you and mold you. That's really interesting what you said. But you know, every man is a leader. Some of them have a real special special charism. But every man is a leader. Uh, you're leading people somewhere. When you say, when you identify yourself as a Catholic, as a Christian, you're leading people. The question is, where are you leading them? You know, they, you may I'm not sorry. even know who's watching you, and specifically within your family. We're talking with Andy Sonier. Am I saying it right? I always say it. Yes, yeah, it. It's, it's like this, kind the, of Cajun. It's, it, yeah, it's my Cajun ancestry. Yeah. It's Sonier. I, mean, I moved to Texas about four years ago, and um, well, you're right on the border, right? I'm right there. I mean, I could, I could actually put one foot on each side and, and straddle it, but it, it's it's Sonia, uh, you know, over here in Texas, uh, they all they want to say Sonia or, or Sonia or I have you know, I correct. It's them. Sonia. Look, it's Sonia. There's a lot of Cajuns in this part of Texas. Well, when we get uh, back, you can talk a little Cajun for us. Oh, sure. We're talking to Andy Sonia, the Cajun from Orange, Texas, who's the leader of the. Uh, Christ in You men's event there that's usually held in August. Where can they find you, Andy, if they want to come to the conference? ChristinU-CMC.com. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up, Broken Places. Jesus calls us to all look for broken people and broken places, because he did. And that means Christians must be a people of what the Old Testament calls shalom, that is, peacemakers. In the Bible, shalom is more than bringing a ceasefire to warn people. Shalom means to bring complete wholeness, well-being, and harmony into all situations in life. Called to places where things are busted up to bring shalom is a serious assignment. 
Some folks are afeard of broken places, like at the gospel mission where I minister from time to time. Some folks often run away from brokenness, like those with uh, physical disabilities, mental illnesses, or addictions. Yep, hard stuff, partner. We learn in chapter 3 of Genesis that sin brought about brokenness within ourselves and our relationship with God, brokenness between each other, and with our environment. Yep. As his people of Shalom, we are called to reflect him by bringing wholeness to broken people, places, and things. And we've got a mighty fine toolkit when we stop and take an inventory, like a shovel to dig out another's car stuck in the mud, repentance and forgiveness to make things right, compassion that remains bedside a person on his or her deathbed, saw and hammer to build a ramp for a wheelchair-bound neighbor, sharing the love and the saving grace of Christ with a sinful, bound-up soul. But it takes more than inventory in our toolkit. Got to have, number one, a desire to look for brokenness, and number two, a willingness to respond to such things, and number three, the commitment to see things through, turning brokenness into wholeness. Blessed are the peacemakers. As such, Jesus said we would prove we are God's daughters and sons. This is Daniel Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I forgot, my wife always asks me to start off the radio show in, with the sign of the cross uh, in Hawaiian. So we'll do the sign of the cross to start this segment, okay, Andy? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's Amen. so cool. It's so cool to um, pray. Uh, you know, Cindy and I, we have a lot. Of, we work out a lot. Well, we play a lot. But one of the things we do often is we, we will walk along the beach, and then we go out, and we, we basically we tread water. I call it power treading water, where the waves are lifting you up and down. You know, we surf and do all that stuff, too. But we'll go out there, and we'll tread water real powerful strokes waves are lifting you up and down and then we pray and in that prayer it's interesting it's fun to pray to the father and to the son and the holy spirit in the hawaiian names in the hawaiian words because it somehow it makes it a fresh and new new prayer but one of my cindy takes delight in is there's a translation called the the jesus book and that and it's it's hawaiian pigeon and like john three sixteen is for god so aloha the world that he gave his one and only boy that who would ever believe in him would have life to the max, wow. you know. So it's just so it's just kind of a kind of a fresh feeling when you when you at, when you pray to pray to you know Jesus in in the in the Hawaiian name. It's just so cool. We have Andy Sonia here with us, and we're talking about uh, men as leaders. What about um, just the man in his home as a leader? Yeah, you know we're we're all called to be that leader at home in our domestic church. Uh, you know. This is the issue we have today in society is that you know the, the secular world is, is trying to redefine the man's role in the family. 
Okay, well, they, first they want to redefine, you know, what a man is. But they want to they want to redefine the, the man's role in the family. The man's role should be the guy who leads his family spiritually. Statistics show very well. And I want to say it's uh, it's there's an eighty something percent mm-hmm, chance. Mm-hmm. That's right. Greater chance that the rest of the family will follow the man to church rather than if just the mom leads the family to church. Yeah, it's like, I think the statistic is is that if the mother goes and the father doesn't, it's around a third that will stay in yeah. the faith. If the, if the, if the, if the um, mother and father go together, it's about, it's about 80%. But if just the father takes the children, it's still up there. It's like 75%. Yeah. So the leadership of the man, uh, how, how can men show day-to-day leadership in their homes? Just about setting a good example as far as uh, teaching your your children and, and 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 praying with your spouse, you know, praying in the morning, praying in the evening, uh, teaching your children how how to use the rosary, uh, mm. teaching your uh, your children uh, time for to read from scripture. Uh, those those things are are, are are I think are becoming more lost in, in the family today. Uh, and it's it, you know it, it's it's great that 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 men would bring their their families to mass. But the other six days of the week are just impor- just as important to practice your Catholicism, because uh, you know we can't be we're not can't be just Catholics one day out of the week. We have to be Catholics every day and practice our faith. And I, I think was, as, as as men we have to show that example. I was with uh, I was at the Napa Institute several years ago, and Archbishop Chaput was there, mm-hmm. and someone raised their hand during their little breakout session, and asked him, well, "What's a really good evangelistic?" program that you know we could use in our parishes and he said get married have lots of children raise them up in the lord that's the lord's evangelistic plan is for children to be raised up in the lord and and like you said to do that throughout the day and but but men could do that in practical ways too like i'm going to coach i'm not just going to you know send you to soccer practice i'll help i'll come and coach you know i'll mm-hmm. Or maybe I'll teach a morning catechism class maybe I'll teach uh, a confirmation class you know or or let's go to the hardware store together and while you're yeah. on the way, the Bible says, while you're on, the, on your way, teach your children. And when they are older, they won't depart from it. So while you're on your way, bring your children with you. Bring one child mm-hmm. at a time with you. And, yeah. and, and just also your language, uh, what you screen from being viewed in, in the home in terms of the TV or the computer. Yeah. yeah, I think it's very important today also is, is to have that family unit so that you know we have mom and dad both present mm. you know daily you know and, and and to have the example of the of the true family and it's uh it, it's become um uh, we see less and less marriages in the church mm. uh, you know that there's more uh civil unions or or just uh you know relationships where they're co-parenting but not in the same home mm-hmm. uh, i think it's very important that men be present in the daily life of, of their children. And I hear so many times where, where they say, yeah, my dad was present, but he was absent. You know, mm-hmm. he was home every day, but he wasn't available. Mm-hmm. So I think we have to make time to be available to our children and not just be there. We have to actually participate in their lives. And, and if it's, if it's coaching soccer or it's a, uh, or it's a, uh, being involved in whatever activities they have, I think it's uh, it's super important that just, dad become more involved. Or just play catch, you know. Yeah, I have I have a, a, a little bit of a father when my dad was a coach, but he played catch with me I think twice, you know. So he was very more involved in his career as opposed to if he what it would have meant to me if he had just coached me personally, you know. Yeah. And so I think a father, you don't have to teach teach, you don't have to be the baseball coach. Just play catch with your son. And yeah. in the process, and I've got a daughter. Okay, mm-hmm. I, I wasn't blessed with a son. I was blessed with a daughter, and I had to, had to spend a lot of time at dance recitals and yeah. cheer practice and, yeah, and things like you that. You know, and it's, it's not that's not the most popular thing that that the dads want to do. You know, yeah, that's but, not on their, their list of things to do. So, but we have to make that sacrifice for our, for our, our child. You know, to know that we're present, we're here for you, we're involved. Well, one way I think that men can show their love for their family too is this is a different this is a different uh, statement. But men, you need to be in shape. You need to be physically in shape so that you have the stamina to not be the dad that comes home and just sits on the couch, 
right. and you and, and the longevity to enjoy not your just your children but your grandchildren so there needs to be a leadership you know in that way too yeah and, I, and I, I'll, I'll tell you i was guilty of that quite a bit I, i'm a shift worker i've been doing shift work for 25 years at one of the chemical plants here locally and you know when i'm not working you know that shift work will beat you down physically yeah, and mentally yeah, yeah. and i was very guilty of a lot of times just just being mentally exhausted and planting myself on the couch on a day off because i just needed to to refresh myself and there were there were a lot of times that i didn't uh do the things with my daughter that i that i should have done because mm-hmm. i was just i was just physically and mentally spent for you know for working a, a day a 12-hour day shift for so many days in a row and i just needed time to recoup you know it's so we have to we have to make that time available to them uh we have to just uh come up with some type they, of, a, it, of, a, of a schedule or plan it's not and the, they say five minutes of quality time when you're when you're in a situation a life stage like that Spending just five minutes or ten minutes of real focused time is different than just going, going, you know, going on a going to the grocery store and really not having any communication. So, yeah. so yeah, men, men. And what about men? Um, I have a friend of mine, Tom Guthrie. He lives in Minnesota. I've known him for many years. We used to have a home in the same neighborhood. I lived, I lived in the in the Twin Cities for about four years, and uh, his home is still in the same neighborhood. Mm. And I went and visited him. And there's a chair that he used to sit in and have his morning prayer time. That same chair, I don't know how many years it's been, 30, over 30 years, maybe longer. That same chair is there, but the, and the same Bible is there, a lot more worn out. Yeah, I'm sure. And, 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 the, and the fact is he would get up early every morning to have his prayer time. And I asked him, Tom, did you get up before your children got up? And he goes, yeah. And I said, well, did they ever happen to one of the kids wake up early and see you here praying? And he goes, yeah, yeah, that would happen. And I, that's the ultimate leadership, you know, leading by example. You know, yeah. your kids know that you're a man of prayer. And I'll tell you, I, I had great examples growing up. My dad was a very prayerful man. Uh, when I was, when I was, the youngest memories that I have was going to my going to daily mass with my dad before dawn. Really? Sometimes, yes. Wow. My my dad was was a was a farmer, uh, and his day started very early. And we were in a, in a small rural farm farm community in Venton, Louisiana, and we had mass for the farmers that was, uh, you know, 5, 30, 6 a.m. And at certain times of the year, it was before the sun came up. So mm. I, I, I remember that as a small child wow. going, before, that, I, before I started school. Yeah. And here you um, are, and here you are, you know, leading yeah. men. We're, yeah, we're gonna my, t- grand, my grandparents were the same way, you know, so I, I had great, great mentors growing up. Praise God. And that's it. That's it. You saw your 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 grandparents. Your grandparents led your father. The father led you, and now you're doing the same for your family. We're going to talk about this this other area of leadership that you're con- you're contemplating, and that is the the diaconate. My dad actually, uh, you know, uh, became a deacon in the Catholic Church. Had a great renewal in the Lord and conversion experience. And my mother and father had a beautiful ministry together. We want to talk about the diaconate, the, the discernment that you're going through. And we'll be right back on the Bear Wozniak adventure. We're talking with Andy Sonier. Where do they find you again? What's the website? Christinu-cmc.com. That CMC stands for Catholic Men's Conference. Yeah, and it's the, the conference is in August. So you yes. could go there, but you can also contact Andy and talk about how can I start maybe just to having breakfast with a few guys once a week or how can I do a do a men's a men's uh, weekly meeting in my parish yes. things like that we'll be right yeah. back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure people love our EWTN TV show Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak thanks to you the show has won four different tally awards and now instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. 
Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station well you asked for it here is more of the bear wasnick adventure aloha and welcome back to the bear wasnick adventure my sons shane and josh have been working very hard uh and are, and we've been able to deliver to ewtn who we love so much mother angelica uh, and everyone at EWTN, everyone there is, is, has laid down their life to be there. You know, it's not a, it, you know, everyone there could probably make a lot more money than they, they do, but they, but they, they, in a sacrificial gift, they're laying down their lives, uh, there in, there in Alabama, but also all of the people involved in, uh, Catholic radio. It's amazing uh, how most of them never had anything to do with radio. And then the Lord tapped them on the shoulder and they stepped out in faith. And so we're excited to be to say that we've sent the fourth season of Long Ride Home, our motorcycle TV show, um, to EWTN. It's up on my son told me today it's uploaded in Prime Video. We just have to get the poster done, and it'll be ready to launch on Prime Video. And uh, the the next eleven episodes that we sent to EWTN uh, were filmed here in Hawaii. So it's pretty cool. If you would really like to help us out, because we really uh, need funding to do all these things. You could go to deepadventure.com and become a member of the Mama Bears or, or Bears School of Manliness and the Man Cave. But if, if you just go and you subscribe to our newsletter, you get a, the video version of this radio show uh, so you can, the YouTube link. And if you become a member of, of the Mama Bears or the Man Cave, uh, you actually get uh, YouTube links to all 33 episodes. So you can watch them whenever you want to and share them with your, with your family when they come by. So long ride home with Bear Wozniak. Pray for us. Ask God to, to help us make up the the big deficit uh, financially, um, the Lord always does, but we ask for your prayers in that way too. Andy Sonia is here in the house. He's a leader of men. What's the name of your uh, men's conference there in uh, Orange, Texas? Or Beaumont is where it's going to be now. Yes, we're, we're, we've moved to Beaumont, but we are a Christ in You Catholic Men's Conference, and we have our event uh, annually uh, in August, and uh, hoping to get you back. You, you, uh, you, uh, you were a presenter, I think, Two years ago, three years ago. I think it may be more like three. I just remember I showed up in Houston, and I don't usually like to fly into the smaller towns because half the time there's a problem with the plane. Yeah, it was it was three years ago because you were yeah. uh, our third annual uh, okay. presenter, and we're coming up on our sixth. I would love to come back, but when I got there to Houston, there, I'm going to get my car. Oh, we don't have any cars. We'll go out. I remember and, that. And then I went oh, to all the all the car companies in, at the airport. The big airport didn't have cars, and neither did they at the small airport. There was no rental cars available. I think the, all the something about maybe the, a rainstorm or I don't know what it was, but there was no rental cars. Yes. So I called my friend Jerry Cohn, who's a cast member on Long Ride Home, and I said, "Can I borrow your car?" So I jumped in the car and drove drove out, and uh, just knew that somewhere over the horizon there'd be a Whataburger. Kept me going. Yeah. Let's, yeah. That's a, it's, it's like a, it's like a searchlight, you know, for, for the hopeless, here's a water burger. Oh yeah. Yes. Uh, praise God for the water burger. Oh my gosh. So Andy, <laughs> you're, you're, it's really cool that you're going through this process as discerning the diaconate. I think it's cool. You go through processes of discernment and the discernment be, yes, it's, 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 it's the right time and the right thing, or maybe not, but the cer discernment process itself is a powerful life-changing yes. experience. Tell us, tell us about that because there might be some people that are listening that, are, that have a, a calling and they don't even know it yet to be a deacon. Yeah, you know, my calling started a long time ago, uh, back when I was in, in grade school. I'd gone to a seminary retreat 
and I really thought that my calling was to be a priest. And along the way, uh, it, it didn't work out that way for me. But in the interim, since then, I've always felt a, 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 a bit of emptiness in my heart. And I think it was mm. because that I that I, I didn't go through with, with the calling to the seminary at the time. So I guess it was about five years ago, six maybe six years ago, I, I began the discernment process about becoming a permanent deacon. And I, I looked at starting the, the, the previous class that was just ordained a couple of months ago, and it just wasn't the right time for me. But uh, it, it's a it's, it's a lengthy process of discernment, and it's uh, it's meant to be that way because it, it's something that you have to be certain of, and it's it's a discernment all the way up to the time of your ordination. You know, you have you have the, the, the option of, of getting out at, at any particular time because it's 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 a it's a huge commitment, and a huge uh, undertaking that that uh, you're 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 making to the Lord. So the the discernment started in serious discernment about five or six years ago, and then there's a there's a uh, there's a regiment of things that you have to do leading up to it uh, as an inquirer, and um, a lot of it is uh, some online classes that you have to take, uh, which uh, we use the University of Dayton for those uh, online classes, and I think there was a uh, ten or eleven online classes and a couple of classes that were actually taught at the diocese level here, and then you have to also uh, have a couple of ministries. Uh, you have to have uh, to be an extraordinary Eucharistic minister, and you have to be uh, a lector. And those are the requirements That's that, that awesome. go into yeah. the fact before you can ever get your application put in. And I'm in the application process right now, which they allow you about three, three and a half months to get your application together because it's that lengthy. In fact, <laughs> I've got the folder right here, and it's uh, it's pretty intense of all the stuff that they ask. I think it's it's probably easier to get a job at the White House than it is to get uh, to get into the diaconate program. Yeah, you're serving the king. Yeah. You know, and, and the thing is, it's your wife that goes through the process of with, with the discernment, right. too. I love that. The, the, my, my, as my mother and father went through that process 30 years ago, you know, and saw, saw the... But I saw a tremendous transformation in my father and in my mother, but mostly in my father, there, there became a certain humility and a sacredness and a, just something beautiful happened uh, through, through the formation process, not at the moment of ordination. Yeah. But, so even if you go through the formation <clears throat> and you discern this isn't what the Lord, the Lord, the Lord wanted me to go through the discernment, but he didn't necessarily want me to be a deacon. <clears throat> it's a beautiful pursuit. Yeah, it, it, it's an act of service. Well, First and foremost, if, if you're not willing to commit your life to service, uh, then it's not for you. Jack, it's probably not for you because you give a lot of yourself and you're, you're a servant to the people of your parish and the people of the diocese. And uh, it's, it's definitely a, it's a beautiful ministry. And uh, uh, I'm asking for lots of prayers from, uh, from those who are closest to me. And... Uh, I guess it's going out to a much larger audience now. So, uh, if you would uh, pr please pray for my continuing uh, discernment in the in the in the path towards uh, ordination. You know the 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 uh, the role of the deacon. It our priests are so overwhelmed. My dad said my dad was a great homeless. By the way, he was a pr his he was a professional speaker for a big part of his career. And then when he took that gift of oratory and <clears throat> applied it to to his homilies. They were just beautiful. In fact, I was sitting with him when my father was dying. I was with him. He was he was unconscious, and I was with him. He set, my sister had set up a beautiful room, almost like a chapel for him, knowing that he would be dying soon. And she put in there all of his coaches winning trophies and stuff. But and but then his lectionary and his uh, you know sacramentary and all the diaconate things. And then there was a notebook of his of his teachings, his homilies. So my nephew was sitting next to me, and I opened it up, and I was starting to read to him. Uh, we were reading my dad's homilies out loud, and 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 then I felt my dad's voice, his 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 um, his breathing changed all of a sudden, and we knew that it was time. And I put my hand on my dad's heart, and I just felt him go home. You know, the beautiful beautiful love of Jesus. I knew where he was, but then uh, you know I looked over. You know, not then, but later in the day, I looked over at my nephew, and I go, "Yeah, my dad's homilies. You know, he died of boredom." 
<laughs> which is the case. I wish I could have known you did. <laughs> which is the case, I think, with with uh, you know some homilies, but but yeah, you have opportunity to be. My dad would said the most effective ministry he had was at funerals, mm-hmm. and 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 at weddings. You know, powerful opportunities to to share and just to comfort and to yeah yeah to administer the sacraments and is, baptisms. Yes, yeah, it's uh it's, it's got to be a beautiful experience. Um, you know, it's it's being it's being that that person that's that's bringing you know the body of Christ into the people. What a, uh, that you're being the vessel. That that's just. Uh, got to be an amazing experience well let, we're, we're going to take a break now and because <clears throat> we got to we're, we're, we're wrapping things up but i just want to pray for you i don't usually do this but Thank lord you. we pray for andy and we pray for all those now that are considering the di- diaconate who are going through that the men and the women and their families we pray that you would raise up real deacons lord with a, a heart to serve that you would open up their schedules make a, their path straight make this available to them and bless them and form them and uh Give them the, give them this beautiful ministry, especially for Andy and his wife, that they would be a blessing to others. And uh, thank you, Jesus, and bless all those all those men out there that are li- listening to us today, and the women. Lord, we just pray that you would raise up leaders among men in each of their households, and uh, within their communities. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Andy Sonier, where can they yeah. find you again? Christ in you dash CMC dot com and please pray for all vocations. We need yes. we need good, we need awesome priests. Uh, we we'd love to have uh, an overflowing of priests in our, in our in our diocese. Amen. Yes. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.